All right, take a look at this picture. Um, what do you like about the picture, or how does it make you feel? Happy. It's happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you think I took it? No, no. Like some picture. Yeah. I'll see these screen. Yeah. yeah. Up. We're next door and. Raise your hand if you think I shot this without permission candidly. Raise your hand if you think I wrote a shot with permission. Okay, whoever gets all the answers right, wins a free Leica. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to start writing this down, okay? Let me show you guys the contact sheets, okay? So first and foremost, how many pictures of her did I shoot? Okay, so if we look through the pictures one by one, you can see all the pictures in the beginning I'm shooting, none of these are good. So the story behind this is essentially there's a woman in her little shop and, you know, it was so small and cramped in there. And essentially you can see me taking all these different pictures, some pictures with the flash, some pictures without flash, some pictures of her head up. Looking in, and one of the practical tips I have for you guys to make people feel good and photograph them is when you see them and you want to photograph them, say, Oh, do you mind if I make some pictures of you? And then they just look like this. Say, Oh, can you get one? He's laughing. Ha 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 ha. And then when you start going, ha 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 ha, then other people will start <laughs> laughing too. So it's just like, This guy's crazy, right? And I knew that I didn't get the good reaction. So I kept taking pictures with a flash, like flash, 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 flash. And I didn't know what any of these good pictures would be. And it actually wasn't until I got shot 16 that I got the great expression. So in terms of street photography techniques when you're approaching strangers and talking to them, right? Try to get them to laugh. So one, one assignment for you guys today, if you're taking uh, photos of permission of strangers, I want you to get at least one picture of somebody laughing with permission. The best way to get someone to laugh is once you go, ha 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 ha, or tickle them. <laughs> I've even done this in strangers, is that like, hey, laugh a little bit, hey, are you ticklish? And then you'll actually tickle a stranger. Most people are actually kind of surprisingly are okay with it. Trust me, I've tried this in many different countries. If you're able to build a rapport with people, it's good. And also realizing that if you see a good picture, your another assignment today is if you ask for permission, you must take at least 10 pictures of them. So the first part of the assignment is the 10 no challenge, is where you approach a bunch of strangers and you try to get 10 people to reject you and say no. Now your assignment is if they do say yes, you must take at least 10 pictures of them. Okay? Um, another thing that's actually very interesting too is when you're looking at pictures, I don't think pictures with permission or pictures without permission, I don't think one is better or worse than the other. What you're just trying to get is you're just trying to capture an authentic moment. So the decisive moment to me, it doesn't matter whether you've talked with the person, engaged with them and asked for permission, or if you shot it candidly without permission. What matters most is a feeling of authenticity or genuineness, or this feeling of like, the feeling of unposedness, which means we don't like pictures of people going like this, because that's not genuine or real or it seems too posed. But if you were talking with me, right, and then, you know, like Matt started tickling me, I was like, ah, ha, ha, and he took a nice picture of me, even though he's interacted with me and taking a picture of me with permission, it's still a genuine moment. So realize that if you're interacting with people, you're trying to capture genuine moments. It doesn't matter if it's with permission or without. What matters is whether you feel if it's genuine or not genuine. Even one thing to consider is, you could be photographing photos of strangers of people without permission, and it could be an ungenuine moment. Looking at this picture, um, so first of all, what do you find interesting about the picture? No, no. <laughs> so why, why, do you, why do you like the shadow of the news? Yeah, 
<laughs> no cue. So what is the symbolism of the nose? <clears throat> and what kind of expression does she have on her face? What do you think is on her mind? Maybe she didn't ask you something. Um, so, to me, this photo is very interesting on many different levels. So, first of all, in terms of the composition, do you see that there's a little bit of this white space mm -hmm. in between her head and background? That's what actually makes this a good picture. If she was a little bit more on top of the black background and there wasn't a little bit of the white, the picture actually wouldn't work. And do you also know, you see the nose is so long, right? Do you know how come the nose is that long? Because yeah, the light is on a special way. Yeah, so this wall here is actually the corner of the wall. So the, the shadow of the nose is going around the, the wall, so it actually makes the nose look long. And also, if you want to know what makes a good picture or not, there's two types of pictures. Usually they're open pictures and closed pictures. What do you think is an open picture? When you have contact with people. Yep, have contact with people. And it's open-ended. It's open to interpretation. Everyone can come out with their own story. So like, even Pinocchio, right? Different cultures in the world have different versions of Pinocchio. Mm -hmm. So maybe to Pinocchio, some people are like, oh, Pinocchio's a liar, and other people are like, Pinocchio's... I don't know. A bad person, or whatever. <clears throat> also, one practical tip is, one of the best ways to get emotion in people is actually with the eyes. So if you have people looking up, what kind of emotion do you get if people looking up? Kind of more hopeful, more excited, more uplifted, more encouraged, more strong, more powerful, happy? If people are looking down, what kind of impression or feeling do you get? Depressed. Depressed or, or contemplative. Contemplative. Bored. <laughs> Bored. Exactly. So, raise your hand if you think this is with permission. Mm -hmm. Candid. Mm -hmm. Let's see if anyone goes two for two, right? Mm -hmm. So if you actually look at the contact sheet, several things that's interesting. Did I only take one picture of her? How many pictures did I shoot? More than one, right? Yeah. How many? Did anyone count? How many pictures is this? 18. 18. 18. Sometimes you don't know if the best picture is in the beginning, in the middle, or the end. That's why you must make a lot of pictures. So there's a myth in street photography that the decisive moment is just one picture and it happens once. Actually, you choose the decisive moment afterwards. This is actually very interesting, is that in the scene, there's many, many different decisive moments, and your job as a photographer is to try to capture as many decisive moments as possible. And considering the world, every single moment, there's millions of billions of trillions of decisive moments happening everywhere in the world, on every single street corner, at every single time. It's your job to try to extract the maximum out of each scene, or like, uh, you know, uh, if you are a milk farmer, you have to squeeze as much milk out of the cow. Even Henri cartier bresson one of his quotes was, sometimes you have to milk the cow a lot to get a little bit of cheese. So applied in photography, sometimes you have to milk the scene a lot to maybe just get one good picture. So you can see in the scene, you can see all the different versions that I had to shoot of all these different angles. And you can see some pictures of her, she's talking with me, some pictures I'm shooting of her a little bit closer up. And you can see how I'm trying to frame the picture and shoot it from different angles. Essentially in the beginning, we asked, we asked her for permission. And what happened was, she's like, oh, okay, I'm okay with it. And you can see all of the single pictures one by one. I'm getting closer and taking some pictures and shooting one by one. And this picture is with permission, but it looks like a candid picture. So I don't think it actually matters whether it's with permission or without permission. Is what matters more is that it feels like a genuine 
moment, and it's it's much more personal. Uh, other fun ex examples, what you guys could try to do, is so. From the previous picture, you said you were don't move. I see something. Nice. Oh, ah, oh, that's a good question. So when I saw this, I saw the I saw the nose. And I just kept clicking, and. It's oh, can you just, uh, so we asked, said, oh, can you just look down and just don't move? It's okay. And just kept clicking and kept clicking and kept working the scene. And oftentimes when I'm photographing pictures, I get so excited, I don't know what to say. So one tip is ask people open-ended questions if you want to keep them there longer to interact with them. So don't just be like, oh, do you like to eat bitterballen? Then that's just a yes or a no question, right? You want to ask them open-ended questions. Oh, What's your life story? Or one thing I like to say, oh, I love your I love your style. Like, how would you describe your personal style? And this actually work, works really well on stylish people, right? Because then people, oh, what would I describe my style? Oh, maybe just clean and minimalist. And also one thing uh, that's good to ask people open-ended questions, like, oh, I love your style. How would you describe your personal style? Then people go, huh. And then once they start thinking, that's when you can start making photographs. <clears throat> Another cool technique I'll, I'll teach you guys when you're shooting street photos is if you see somebody interesting from the side, <clears throat> so let's say he's standing there, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to just shoot from the side. What I try to do is, I call this, uh, so this is a new technique, it's called the panoramic technique or the 360 degree technique, is that, so let's say the man's standing right here and I'm standing here, essentially what I'm trying to do, and he's his standing here but he's facing this way, right? So the first picture I shot is like here from the corner click, and then the next picture I take a step to the right, click, and then the last shot I get in front of him, click. So if you see something interesting go click, Click, click. Um, so, Pierre, why don't you stand up? So, like, stand here. So, imagine you're standing here. Pretend like you're smoking a cigarette. So, I wouldn't just take pictures of him, like, click, click, click. I'd go like this. Hold the camera up. Click, click, click. And then I kind of click. This might be the best picture. And then, what I can do afterwards is pretend like I'm photographing something behind him. And if I use it, stand, stand there. I'll use the iPad as an example. Stand, stand, stand here again. So this is Eric Kim's iPad street photography example. Well, this is actually kind of cool, right? So, let's say I see him smoking a cigarette, and I'm behind him. I go click, then I go click, click. Oh, and that's good. And then if I want a simple, clean background, what I'll do is I'll photograph him against the sky. And it makes for a much better picture. Well, it's actually a pretty nice picture of you. <laughs> so, if you guys want to look through the pictures one by one, right? <laughs> look at how many peers there are. <laughs> Inception. Inception, right? So, if I give you guys a real example of street photography, maybe you're shooting like this. Then you take a step closer, like this. Like this. But you can see there's all these distracting elements here, right? And this is better, like he's making eye contact. But like what Mark mentioned is you want a simple clean background. And then always what I like to do is when you're shooting street photos, you get a nice thigh workout. So crouch down very low and photograph people against the sky. And even when I was shooting this, another tip, if you want nicer, cleaner compositions, look at the edges of the frame. Keep the edges of the frame clean. Here there's too much of this popping out, so it's quite distracting. And even here, this is actually not good. I should have actually gone a little bit closer and framed it a little bit closer. So another tip is when you're shooting, so here it's clean, but here in the background it's actually quite messy and distracting. So ultimately, one thing I want you guys to do is to <laughs> work the scene in terms of that. Other examples of shooting from low angles. So
so for the last technique, and you ask or again to the people, no, you don't ask. You just oh, pretend so to for the last technique, mm -hmm. what you can do is don't ask. Click, 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 click. And then after you take the picture, if they look at you and they smile, then you can say, oh, you look so nice. You mind if I make some pictures? He said, yeah, sure. And you go for it. And the other times, you'll click, you'll click, 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 and they look at you like really pissed off. Then, then after you go click, 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 then hold the camera to your eye and then pretend like you're shooting the building around them and then keep clicking and using the video camera technique to pretend like you're shooting something else. Um, this is also another good example of a picture. What do you like about the scene? The gesture. The gesture? The sun, the expression. The sun, the expression? It's a symmetry. symmetry. Symmetry? Yep, the nice symmetry. The different emotions. The different emotions. How do you think I got the picture? You don't move. You stay here and you wait for the right before to come. Okay, so Matthew, stand up here. Alright. Put on your hat. Okay? Put on your earrings. <laughs> And become an old lady. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so essentially, I was walking down the street and I saw her. And I actually shot this with a, a 24 millimeter lens, I think, so quite wide, right? So she's walking, she's just walking. And then I walked in front of her and I stood down and I was going to take a picture. And then she sees me. And then she looks at me and goes like this. So do that. Click. And then just walk away. So, actually what happened is, people when they see this picture, so raise your hand if you think she looks kind of shocked or surprised. Raise your hand if you think she's giving me the pose for fun with jazz hands. So actually what happened was in this picture, she saw me like, you know, crazy Asian tourist, and she actually posed for me. So it wasn't just, it wasn't like she's like, ah! Like it was just like, she's like, ha! Ah! Right? You, you can take a seat. So, the moral of the story is, when you're shooting street photos, don't feel like your presence, don't always try to be an invisible street photographer. Because oftentimes, having yourself there makes for a much more interesting picture because they see you and they respond to you in a much more interesting way. So, in this picture, if she didn't know I was taking a picture, she wouldn't have shown off and then the jazz hands gesture. The good thing with that is I was able to put myself into the scene and this picture is like me. Kind of like open and flamboyant. way. Um, another practical tip you guys could do is uh, juxtaposition in street photography. So, does anyone here know juxtaposition? Jux? Juxtaposition? Juxtaposition? Tegenstellingen. Ja. So, what, what is it? Tegenstellingen. <laughs> juxtaposition. Is naast elkaar zitten, volgens mij. In, in een rij. In een row? Is in the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I'll, I'll, write it. I'll write it for you guys. Yeah, I, I know the spelling, but I don't really know the okay. Dutch translation. So, for all of our edification, the word is jux ta ta the juxtaposition for once again. I think it's the same French. Oh really? It, yeah, it's, it's a French word. Juxtaposition. <laughs> See, it's so much sexier when you say it. <laughs> right? Uh, long, long, one, in a row, one, you know, yeah. in a like a world, you know? Yeah, that's it. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, J-U-X-T-A, juxta, position. So, what is this actually, uh, so for those French speakers, what does this actually mean in French? In, I don't know the meaning of the exact word, but it means that in a row, you know, you have one by one, and next to one, something similarly or not, and it's... And in English? 
Yeah, so you guys are essentially right. So the, the, the theory of juxtaposition in street photography is you're taking two different elements and you're putting them next to each other and you're creating some sort of interesting juxtaposition or contrast. That's another easy way to think about it. So in this photograph, right, we see who? This guy here, right? And you also see mannequin, right? So in terms of the eyes, the faces, kind of looks the same, right? So kind of looking at you towards you know, the camera and him also like looking towards the camera, right? So juxtaposition is the art of taking two different elements that are kind of similar but kind of dissimilar and putting them together. So what you guys could practically do is when you're shooting street photos, get very close, because he'll stand about here and she'll stand about there. What I did was I pretended like I was just photographing the thing in the background, whereas in reality, I'm trying to juxtapose both of them and create some sort of contrast or play off of uh, the both of them. So when you're shooting street photos, if you want to be more invisible and more stealth, try to get close and pretend like you're photographing somebody else in the background. Um, another practical tip is, and this, is, this, is, this one is for you, Mark. So I want to show you guys a picture that I shot in Japan. <coughs> so looking at this picture, so what, what, what's the story behind this picture? What's going on there? This is uh, back. It looks like the uh, spine. Yeah. Yeah. Does he look very happy? Yeah. No. no. But what do you have below here? The hearts. Yeah. The hearts, right? The way I shot this picture was the same. The 360 panoramic technique is that I actually shot this with um, a Fujifilm XT2 with a new, I was like, 18 mil or. 14 millimeter lens, so essentially it's a 24 millimeter. So he's standing here, and I'm going click, 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 click. And while I'm shooting, I'm essentially trying to make a clean background. So that's another tip is when you're shooting street photos and looking through the viewfinder, don't get tunnel vision into the center. Oops. So often the mistake we do in street photos is that we get too tunnel vision, and we only look at what's in the center of the frame. But whereas, what you actually want to do is when you're shooting street photos, you kind of want to look at the edges of the frame and look at the background and to make sure the edges of the frame look very clean. And even one thing that I like to do is, uh, so I'm using the iPad and I use this app called Procreate to better understand my compositions. I will actually start to do is using different layers to paint in the background. So you can see, Already, the background is clean. So, Mark, this might be a good assignment for you, is take your best pictures that you have clean backgrounds. And the more you start to paint this and think about it, the more you'll start to internalize better compositions. And then you can see, like, I start painting in different layers. And then I start putting in, oh, <laughs> scary eyes. Start painting in his face. Or, if you guys prefer him to look more like uh, Bruce Lee. So once again, or if you just have just a simple subject against the black background. So this is a very good technique for you guys to better understand, you know, having simple backgrounds. Another tip? What do you mean by clean the background? You mean Ah, so okay, that's a good question. So let me sorry, I'm gonna be more specific. So if you want to make a nice picture, just often having a clean, simple white background, or a simple black background, or a simple gray background, or even a blue background or a red background, whatever is good. Having a simple background and then just adding the subject into the frame is a good way for you to make a much more interesting photo composition because once you have a simple background. 
then it allows the subject to pop out from the scene and for there to be a good contrast between the subject and the background. Because that's actually the biggest difficulty in street photos is that you find an interesting subject, but if the background's too messy and it's distracting, then it doesn't really help to make a good picture. Even another good tip is when you're shooting street photos, all right, so take a look at this composition. So, why do you think the picture works? The flash. The flash. So this is me shooting at a low angle. So you remember I mentioned having the leading lines in the background? So, if you're out shooting street photos, by having all these leading lines in the background pointing to the subject at this perspective, it draws the viewer's eyes much more here. And even if we imagined the matrix, pretty, pretty innovative iPad techniques, huh? So if you imagine this grid of this as your sky, so this would even work, you know, the streets of New York City or any big city or even Amsterdam, you see the perspective in the grid. And then what you're just trying to do afterwards is trying to add a subject somewhere in the center of the frame. Or even painting in all these different backgrounds. So one of the best ways to actually learn composition in street photography is obviously when you're shooting pictures, you don't see all these things when you're shooting, but when you go home and you're analyzing your pictures after the fact, go home and analyze the pictures after the fact. Um, Another good example too. So this is actually a painting version I did of this, but the original version is this picture. So what's interesting in this picture? So this is also another pro tip. Remember I was saying that like you look for interesting backgrounds, pretend like you're shooting the background. But in this case, I actually asked for permission. And what kind of feeling does that give you? Yeah. Stepping in the bag. <laughs> Stepping in the bag, right? Another good pro tip is when you're shooting pictures, don't always sub, don't always focus, uh, focus on the people in the foreground. Focus on people in the background. <laughs> and you could even see if I even abstract this image. It's very it's very simple in terms of the background. Is that it's just a black background. It allows the subject to kind of pop out. Um, he was a guy in the or he was a... Oh, it's a post, it's, a, it's an advertisement. Oh, okay. It's just an advertisement. Oh, okay. <laughs> and how did you make the picture with the leading lines? You're just picture. Did you just, were you scratching down there waiting for... for oh, that's, for good. that's a good question. So, the way I was able to make this is, when I'm not shooting street 